you're saying to it that glucose is feeding cancer. So does that mean, what does that mean in terms of one, should we eat fruit? Two, should we eat beans because do they turn to sugar? And three, what about whole grains? Cause do they turn to sugar? Well, they can in some people uh, more than others. I mean, you measure your glucose ketone index will tell you what you can and cannot eat. It's very simple. You get the meter, you take your blood measurements. And if it says that beans make your blood sugar go high, don't eat beans. I mean, you, you can make, every person can make the decision for themselves based on their GKI, the glucose ketone index. What about fruit though? I don't measure your GKI and see what happens. Uh, you know, uh, grapefruit is very low glycemic. Uh, uh, an orange could be much higher. Again, measure your GKI. Your answer will be given to you by your, your GKI, which could vary from one person to the next. It's not constant. No. One person may not be what a person can. So the way to know what you can or cannot eat, you measure your GKI. Thank you. Okay, next we have Deborah. Deborah, what is your question for Dr. Seafree? Hi, yes, good morning. I wanted to ask, um, I understand the difference between when you have cancer and don't have cancer, maybe different protocols, but at this conference, there's of course a lot of talk and adoption of plant-based um, and vegans and vegetarian. And then um, today in this talk, having someone who has cancer and you're promoting or saying that part of the treatment would be the keto um, and achieving ketosis, um, quite often ketosis and keto is associated with eating lots of meat and vegetable protein. So I guess I have two questions. Um, it, uh, what I wanted to know, I guess, is, is there a way to achieve the ketosis and the good results still not eating meat or in the event that you get cancer, forget the vegan stuff, just go have a hamburger. No, no. Uh, I, again, it's the GKI. Um, you can be in ketosis on a completely vegan diet or on a carnivore diet. So again, like Pablo Kelly did, he was measuring his glucose ketone index and he was able to keep it 2.0 or below. Someone on a vegan diet could do the same thing. It's just that the food items that will keep you in ketosis uh, vary, uh, differ. Uh, again, it's mostly due to low carbohydrate. The lower the carbohydrate you have in the diet, the better you're gonna have a GKI value. And again, this is like the last question, uh, we can't know that for each person unless they do their own measurements. And we find it varies tremendously what one person can eat, what the other person cannot eat. And it all comes down to, so if you're going to be a vegan or a carnivore or whatever, as long as you can keep a low GKI, uh, then that is one way to um, reduce the rate of tumor growth. Okay, great. Next we have... Yaron, Yaron, what is your question? Hi, uh, thank you for the great presentation, doctor. So I have uh, two quick questions. One, uh, does your research show that uh, the press pul pulse metabolic uh, therapy help also for uh, small cell cancer? And my second question, if a patient wants to get this treatment of press uh, pulse metabolic therapy, where he can find it and is it available for, for your knowledge in Israel? Well, again, um, yeah, it works. It, it, all the cancers, all the, ma all the major cancers have the same problem. So small cell cancer is, the, has the, is dependent on glucose and glutamine as well. Um, colon, or rectal, all the major cancers. That if, you, if you look at our, our science paper, we, we went through all the major cancers. So they all need glucose and glutamine for the most part. Um, there are clinics that are opening up uh, slowly um, around the world. And even in Israel, uh, there are some folks. You, you just have to take those three questions that I put at the end and go to the oncologists and see how they answer those questions. And then you'll know whether or not you can use meta. If, they, if they're familiar with metabolic therapy for cancer, they should be able to provide you with accurate answers to those, to those questions. If they have never heard of metabolic therapy, they never know about Otto Warburg, they didn't know this, then you have to recognize that these people probably don't understand the biology of the disease. And then you, you, you have to make decisions based on that information. So yeah, I mean, different countries, the Turkish group in Istanbul, Turkey, is embracing metabolic therapy and they're getting quite, quite good success on advanced uh, terminal cancers. 
So uh, again, a lot of people are going to the Istanbul clinic. There are certain clinics that are opening up in 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 uh, United States, but it's they're few and far between because most people go to their major oncology centers um, for information, and most of the oncology centers are, uh, either don't know about it or don't accept it or whatever. So you just have to you know do your own investigation on that. All right, thank you, Yaron, for that question. Thank you. Doctor, next we have Wendy. Wendy, what is your question? Yeah, hi, thank you so much. Um, my question regarding press pulse therapy, are there any devices that one can afford to buy to have for their self? And otherwise, how do you find doctors that uh, use press pulse therapy and the uh, DOM or whatever that drug therapy is? Thank you. Yeah, well, the device would be the, the Keto Mojo um, blood glucose ketone meter. You can get it from Amazon. Um, uh, and the consumables, I mean, the meter itself is not that expensive. I don't know, maybe $60. Uh, but the consumables, the glucose, the glucose strips are cheap. The, the glutamine or the correction, the, the, the ketone strips are a little bit more expensive. Um, but you can use urine, urine uh, ketone strips in between the blood strips for, for ketone measurement. Um, whether like, again, unfortunately, uh, what I've outlined is the future of cancer uh, uh, management. Um, you don't, you don't see this in all the major clinics. And I I'm surprised they, they, some of the physicians hear about oncologists, a lot of them just don't, um, know about it. And I think it's important. Who's, who's going to tell the oncology clinics that they want press pulse? If you go in and say, oh, listen, I, I have breast cancer, colon cancer, whatever, I'd like, I'd like press pulse metabolic therapy um, rather than radiation and chemo. Uh, uh, well, then you have to see what kind of response you get. Ask those three questions that I put at the end, and then you'll know right off the bat whether they can do that or not, and whether they want to do that or not. I'm it's sorry to interrupt. It's happening for brain cancer, but not for the other cancers. I'm sorry, I'm not clear. The met, I have the keto mojo, but the yeah. press pulse therapy. I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Okay. Are okay. there any things that we can buy ourselves I that see. would I provide see. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So once you, what the way the clinics work, um, is that once the patient is in nutritional ketosis with a GKI of 2.0 or below, is when the patient would then be. Uh, given by a professional uh, physician, uh, dosages of, uh, of different drugs uh, that will target glucose and glutamine. So you need to uh, be aligned with a physician that can prescribe uh, these different approaches. And access to a hyperbaric oxygen chamber uh, is also part of this. And you will need to, uh, this is, unfortunately, uh, there's no very few, if any, clinics that really put this package together um, for helping the patients. And uh, it's going to be uh, uh, on the part of the patients to demand this. If they, if they want this, they're going to have to tell the, the oncologists or the, uh, the treating facility that uh, press pulse, we've clearly outlined what is needed to be done, how to do it. So it's at the part, on the part of the oncologist to read this information and adapt it into their, into their clinics. So um, once this happens, I think we're going to start seeing much greater uh, uh, improvement. But you're right. I mean, right now you say, well, what can I do? Can I go out and buy my own hyperbaric oxygen chamber? They're very expensive. I, I wouldn't do this. I would find a place where you could. And the other, the other problem is the insurance companies uh, will cover the cost of hyperbaric oxygen to improve your body after you've been irradiated. Uh, but they don't approve it. Uh, for managing the cancer itself. So you have this insurance issue problem that also has to be resolved. So there is a number of, of, of situations that must be resolved. Even though the concepts and the strategy is clear for helping people live longer with cancer at a higher quality of life, the application of this is in its infancy and has not yet been fully recognized or adapted in the, in the various cancer clinics. And that's what will have to come from the pressure of the cancer patients to make sure those changes occur. Mm -hmm.